Welcome back, everybody, to the final Caravan of Garbage for the year. Oh, my God. And we thought, why not celebrate this achievement by looking at the tallest comic book movie in history? So tall, isn't it? Yes. I mean, that's due to its lack of width, I imagine. It just appears tall. Oh, okay. You think that that might be it? Do you think stout would be a more appropriate yeah, word? Yeah, a real chode of a movie. <laughs> now, we've finally come back around to it. We've already looked at Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League 2017. Henceforth referred to as Justice Huig, as directed by Joss Whedon. <laughs> Correct. So we're finally here. We're doing Zack Snyder's Justice League, which he managed to finish in 2021. And man, I watched this, and I watched this with an intensity because I'm like, this is the last video we're going to do of the year. Mm -hmm. And God, this is such an important thing. And then I got about three hours in, and I'm like, no, it's not. This isn't important at all. <laughs> this is a silly movie. But we're going to talk about it. But first you have to leave a like. Oh, yeah. Because this is important stuff. That's right, it's exactly. very important stuff. Yeah, yeah. I tell you what, Mason, I mean, the accolades that this movie received, for one, it's it's sort of... Tall. Os it's tall, stout. It's very stout. It's Oscar winning, sort of. Is it? Not really. It got an award at the Oscars for the most hashtags for the Flash entering the Speed Force. Oh, that's right. It's the most memorable cheer moment. I forgot about that, yeah. Which also was probably rigged by, like, bots or whatever, but who cares? This was always going to go this way. Uh -huh. Let's be realistic. But it is technically the most important moment in cinematic history. That's true, and they're never going to run that award again, so it's going to remain like that forever. Exactly. I'll also say this, it's obviously the best live-action Justice League movie. You mean apart from that made-for-TV one from, like, the 90s or whatever? I mean, that's a great movie. What about the George Miller one, Justice League Moral, that never got made? I mean, that's a great movie. Sure. Are there any others? What else am I forgetting? I mean, there's the 2017 one. Oh, yeah, okay, right. That is one of the worst movies ever made, though. <laughs> it's one of the worst superhero movies ever made. What I realised in having watched that and then watching this is that everything I like about that movie, and there are things, is just stuff from this. Mm -hmm. So I would say, look, I like this. I go back and forth. <laughs> I'll be honest, earlier today, I finished watching this, and I'm like, I kind of hate this. But I think that's maybe because I had to watch this in a hurry, yeah. so we could talk about it. Well, it was initially going to be a series, and yeah. I think it would definitely play better as like a four to six part mini series, Like the way they broke up Hugh Jackman's Australia into 17 or 18 episodes. Absolutely. Is it better? No. Is it longer? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think this, this one, it has to deal with the same dilemma that Justice Week had to deal with, yep. which is this is meant to be their team movie like The Avengers. Mm -hmm. The problem being is that we'd really only seen the origins of three of the team before this. And right? a previous Justice League movie. Oh yeah, that's also true. But but I mean it's the same <laughs> I know what it's, you it's, mean, it's yeah. the same issue. So you need that time to build up Aquaman and Cyborg and the Flash so we care about them. You could just have them come in and be like, Hey my name's Vic and um I'm a cyborg as you can see and mm -hmm. I've got some issues with my dad. Anyway we've got to deal with this parademon situation. There's a box, there's three boxes. You know what? I can explain it. I've got time. I've got so much time. <laughs> it's a lingering movie. And by that, I mean every scene is as long as it possibly could be. See, that's the thing as well. And, I, and I'll tell you. And for, it's not just the slow-mo. I'll tell you why, James. I'll tell you for why it's so long, James. Is it all the slow Nordic songs? It is. All, well, that's the, I mean, it, that is that is one element of it, certainly. But the thing, the thing about it is, obviously, the previous version, 2017's Justice League, contained elements of the version Zack Snyder wanted wanted to make, but then it got cut to ribbons by Joss Whedon and by the suits yep. over at Warner Brothers. And so the, the Snyder fans were like, well, if he gets a chance to make a new version of this, we don't want to see that happen. We will absolutely lose our minds if there is not a sequence where Lois Lane sort of searches through a hamper for like an old flannel shirt and she really contemplates which one to take out mm. and then she looks at it and she lingers for a bit and then she takes it, she walks it over to the, the window and then she hands it to Clark and he goes, hmm, maybe I'll wear this and he puts it on or whatever. <laughs> if we don't see that in its full glory, we will riot. You know what I mean? <laughs> so what happens with filmmakers generally is they film more footage than they need for the finished product, mm -hmm. obviously, because you don't want to be a film director and you finish filming and your cast and crew go their separate ways and you get into the editing bay and you realise you didn't film anybody's faces or whatever, right? <laughs> Could be awkward, right? So, you know, you need to film a bunch of angles for particular scenes and use the ones that work the best or you want to have a, you know, a shot pan around a character for a, you know, a full minute knowing you're only going to use the 20 seconds where it looks the coolest or whatever, yeah. right? But then what Zack Snyder did is he put on Vero, the social media platform for Zack Snyder, mm -hmm. he put that picture of all the cans of 
Snyder Cut footage. Yeah. And I think he said 214 minutes, three and a half hours. And then I think the Snyder fans were like, if we see anything less than three and a half hours, we will explode. <laughs> you know what I mean? If we don't see the Amazons say we have to contact the outside world, we're going to need to use the Arrow of Artemis. So let's go to the room where we have the Arrow of Artemis and we'll uh, explain how it works and then we'll open the box containing the Arrow of Artemis and then we'll take it to like the launching platform for the Arrow of Artemis and then we'll light it on fire and then we'll shoot it over to man's world and then Wonder Woman will see it on the telly. She goes, that's the Arrow of Artemis. Then we will riot. <laughs> If we don't see that entire thing. I think by doing that as well, this is more kind of like a mood or an experience. You could you know? say that, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. But what I'm saying is there's so You've many... You've got to mon- get in a zone for this. Yeah, but what I'm saying is there's so many elements to this where, like, realistically, people are saying, well, this is Zack Snyder's original vision for this. No. But it cannot possibly be because when he was working for Warner Brothers to make it as a theatrical release, obviously he would have cut down that three and a half hours to a manageable length because he was doing the bidding of Warner Brothers. This is four hours, by the way. It is four hours. He added more. He added, he, they did some reshoots. He would have cut that down to two and a half hours, yes. two hours, something like that. And he would have understandably cut out a lot of stuff. Like there's a moment right at the start where Bruce Wayne is walking across some like snowy outcroppings. Mm. You wouldn't use the entire thing. You no. know what I mean? It's not Lord of the Rings. It's not Lord of the Rings. Sometimes it is, though. So what I'm saying is there's some good stuff in this, but there's some pacing issues. Yes. Yeah. okay, that's fair enough. It goes a bit slow, in my opinion. So what they had to do, Yes. they shot extra footage... There's the nightmare sequence. We'll talk about that in a bit and other Mm -hmm. bits and pieces. And they had to finish over 2,000 special effects shots. They also reused shots of Henry Cavill from Man of Steel and Batman v Superman for various sequences. There's a bit where, you know, you see him turn bad and Darkseid puts his hand on him. That's from Man of Steel. Mm. And obviously there's things that they had to go back and completely fix, like Steppenwolf, which has a complete redesign, Mm. which I like. I like the way the suit is, like, actively protecting him. You see where it snaps off all the arrows at one point. That's pretty cool. Best part of that really long scene. It really Yes. So long. Where were they going? Where are the Amazons going? They're like, we're well, going to protect this mother box. Let's drag it behind a horse. Then what? You get to the end of the island. Where are you putting it then? Arrow of Artemis? Tie it to the Arrow of Artemis. Yeah, make yeah, it yeah. Wonder Woman's problem. Yeah, exactly. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's a better design. The, the Steppenwolf design is way better. And he's got those beautiful little doe eyes. Oh, when I love he's that. sad. When he's sad. I love the bit. <laughs> When his helmet rolls back and that's his head. Yeah. It's like, wow, that's all you, is it? Those are his big his big ears. <laughs> it's his big old ears. My favourite step or part, and speaking of there's too many scenes in this movie. Sure. It's where there's two scenes where he gets on that like molten rock face phone. Oh yeah. And he calls Dassard and both times he's like, I've I found a I found a mother box. Did you find all of them? No, there's others. more? Word is please. Well, if you could find another one. You have to get us fifty thousand worlds. It's too many. Yeah, yeah. It's unachievable, in my opinion. Oh, yes. IMO. There is some weird kind of, what are you even doing in this situation with the Amazons and the Atlanteans? I mean, you barely see the Atlanteans. It seems like there's eight eight of them. Yeah. You know? oh, <laughs> this yeah, is yeah. set but before Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. Not a drumming octopus to be seen. No, there is an octopus and it's guarding a box sort of at one point. But there is that moment where the Amazons, there's like 200 of them guarding the box before it comes to life. <laughs> and I guess there aren't a lot of jobs so sure. a lot of people they work in the in the big stone room. Yeah, that's the, oh, that's the plumber Simon as well. Oh, I'm gonna have to go out hunting today. Oh, I'll be in the big stone room when well, nothing happens ever. Well, no, no. And then he turned up, and then they're like, oh, "What are we gonna do? Let's sink it into the ocean." He teleported in from space. He's probably <laughs> gonna be able to get out of this, don't you uh-huh, think? Sure, sure, sure. I think putting all the Victor Stone stuff back in this is great. Yes. I can see why Ray Fisher was upset. Yeah, because he's. Not used well at all in the other version. He got what is called a character arc. And he said the line, you should probably move. Oh my which God, Which was in yes, the original please. trailer. That's right. Oh my goodness. You should probably move. Yeah! I think getting to see more of Apocalypse, Decide, Granny Goodness, Dark Side, all of that's great. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the design of anything grey and bubbly is really good. Mm-hmm. But whenever it goes outside, it's like... This isn't a real outdoor place. Themyscira. Yes. I mean, if you went to Norway or whatever, yeah, go to a slightly different area of Norway where it's a bit greener. Sure. You're like, that's the Amazon homeland. <laughs> you don't, It could be. Yeah. You don't know what it's like. Nah. No, I think a lot of the tweaks make a big difference. The Steppenwolf invasion is changed to a dark side invasion. Mm-hmm, There's mm-hmm. a moment where Mira, Mira, whatever... 
pulls water out of Steppenwolf, uh-huh, and sure, then he sure. just starts bleeding from his face. Yeah. That's great. All I've got left is salt. <laughs> <laughs> I think adding the black suit for Superman is really good. I, I like that look. I think it's stupid. Look, okay. I think it is. A, I, I didn't write this as a note, <laughs> but if the shoe fits, I was going to say it feels like a dork's idea of what cool is. Oh, a black suit. Well, people say there's an actual reason for it. because Oh, because it, it's solar charging yes. or whatever. But that works in the comic books, because when they brought him back to life, he wasn't really dead but they brought him back to whatever yeah he didn't have his, any powers he was just a regular man and yeah. so he needs the suit to solar charge but when he comes back in both versions of this he's as powerful as superman is because he's superman look i don't disagree and i think there is a real missed opportunity in this film series to do literally anything with the death of superman mm. he's barely superman he dies it's probably a couple of months yeah. until he's back again we know that because Lois Lane is probably pregnant mm. and she's not showing uh-huh. or she's hiding it very well. I'm not saying necessarily you do the comic book story where, you know, you do the reign of Superman and you introduce like Superboy and mm-hmm. John Henry Irons and whoever else. I would love to see something like that. Uh-huh. Don't get me wrong. But then he's just back and it's business as usual, you know? Mm, yeah, yeah. I think there is a real missed opportunity to explore a world without Superman who actually believably likes this guy. Yeah, and and to have the world really know who he is and then lose him and then have him come back. Two notes. One, there's a moment where the Flash is like, he was my hero. And I'm like, not your dad? (laughs) Not your dad who defended your mum from that weird time-travelling murderer or whatever it was? Not your dumb dad? (laughs) Your stupid dad? (laughs) And the the second thought is, my problem with the black suit is not, it's not that the solar charging thing or whatever, it's that at the final battle, there's no contrast between him and Batman. Like, it's not visually interesting. I think what Snyder should have done is he should have pretended like he was going to do the black suit. And then at the end, standard suit with the trunks. Give him the big red trunks. Oh, my goodness. Right? Yeah, He's yeah. like, I need extra red trunk power yeah, but in is my that, groin but region. Is that, but is that cool? Yeah, is it's that cool. cool. It's not as cool, though, is it? No, a black you're right. Suit. It's not as cool as a it's black a, suit. It's a good look, man. Mm. Okay, speaking of the Flash, the super speed stuff and the time travel stuff is way better. Mm-hmm. There's a moment where... He's moving like a flash, catching some rubble, and I think that's a really Uh interesting representation. And the moment where he does run through time and all the damage reverses and you see Victor Stone's face, like, reform. And then you go from that to the flash where they're in a a weird nightmare bubble world where nobody looks like anybody, really. the very disrespectful. uh, (laughs) Yeah, the giant disrespectful wheel of historical sadness. (laughs) I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. You're absolutely right. One thing that I like way more, I think the finale is way better in in this than the the previous version. What's interesting about the 2017 version, I don't understand why this is, because when Joss Whedon made Avengers, he seemed to understand that everybody on the team needed their time to shine yeah. because every character is somebody's favourite character and even if your character's only ability to, is the ability to shoot arrows real good, mm. you need to give him a moment where he does something really cool and interesting. Where he uses his six arrows. Exactly, he uses all them six arrows, right? But in his version of Justice League, everybody's just sort of like losing a ton of ground against Steppenwolf. They don't know what the hell they're doing no. until Superman shows up. But in this, I could believe that any of them... Like, they really lay into him yeah. at the end there. Oh, my, like, my favourite moment. And oh I'm my like, God. They're, conceivably, they could take him. Right? It's it's handy that Superman showed up, Yeah, but he's not the linchpin. They're not just a bunch of losers being like, oh, I don't know what... I don't think we can save the world unless we bring a man back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> A thing that's never happened before, <laughs> but I guess we could do it. Well, it happened one time. Oh. It happened one time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's what we're here to talk about, folks. <laughs> we're evangelical now. We tried being part of the manosphere. didn't work. So we're evangelicals now. Yeah, but look, I think also Superman definitely turns the tide, which, you know, mm. validates the idea that you would risk bringing him back yeah. mm-hmm. from the dead. And just that... That Steppenwolf death is just tremendous. What a team bonding moment. Yeah. You know, he gets flung into the portal and then beheaded. Yeah. In front of all his mates oh my- and his dad or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or his uncle, I don't know. Yeah. Just tremendous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that stare down of just like, huh, yeah. okay. What now, bitches? <laughs> you know who they could have used? Who's that? Martian Manhunter. Disagree. <laughs> well, they didn't need him, did they? <laughs> no. I like how he shows up at the end and he's like, I would like to help what you're doing. You missed a pretty big thing, though, yeah. didn't you? It's a real Leonard Nimoy in that episode of The Simpsons, you know, the monorail <laughs> yeah. episode. He says, uh, My work here is my done. My work here is done. You didn't do anything. <laughs> my favourite part. He's also not in the future. 
That's true. I mean, I guess he could technically be anybody. He could. <laughs> I think he's Mera because he's obviously not nailing that accent. No, you blooming bastard. <laughs> it's fascinating. The moment where he shows up as Martha Kent at Lois Lane's door and they have a beautiful heart-to-heart about missing Clark and what that means to them That's themselves weird. and the world. It is weird. <laughs> and then... Martha Kent leaves and just turns into Martian Manhunter and then turns into General Eiling, who didn't help during Man of Steel either, no. quite frankly. And then he leaves. What I like about that, though, is that it's going to make the next family get together, like, really awkward. Yeah. Because Lois Lane's going to be like, Martha, I just wanted to say thanks so much for, for coming to visit that time. I was, I was really in a bad place and I don't know I don't know what I was going to do. I was really missing Clark. And she's going to be like, what are you talking about? Mm. Well, I didn't. The you- bank was taking my house. <laughs> Yeah, I had my own stuff going on, <laughs> Lois. And my son died. Yeah. I guess we got to also talk about the nightmare world, the revisiting of. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I tell you what, this really confirmed to me that I do not like Jared Leto's Joker. No. Just terrible. Is it you don't like Jared Leto's yes. Joker or Jared Leto? Yes. Okay, great. <laughs> Two big yeses. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Let's put him on the board. It feels like, and I don't know whether this is true, that he did his own dialogue. Who's going to give you a reach around? Mm. I don't know whether that's true, but it's just all kind of like... <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, then Batman drops a big F-bomb and... I will fucking kill you. Ooh. Ooh, you know, he's serious. I'll, I'll kill you. I'm gonna Just g- kill him now. I'm going to give you this card, and when the card's gone, then the truce is gone. Why? Because he's got it in the gun in Batman v Superman. <laughs> right, right. So right. he's got to have the card, right? Yeah, I guess that's You need true, to yeah. explain the card. Mm. It's dumb, and I don't like it. Yeah. And, uh, look, I understand the sequence. I understand why they did it, because this was going to be a sequel at some point, yeah, uh-huh. which we will talk about. And a post-apocalyptic future is interesting. Like, that's inherently a quite a good, you know. Yeah, but also, seeing that. that scene looks like it's shot in a cupboard. Because it was. Yeah, sure. And none <laughs> or of Or a the, driveway. Or a driveway. Might have been in Zack Snyder's yeah. driveway. But it does feel like that they all shot that on different days. Yeah. A lot in of, different years also. A lot, of this, a lot of this movie does look a lot like a whiskey ad or maybe like... An ad for a mobile game. Yeah. I mean, some of it looks tremendous. Some of it looks amazing. Yeah, and some of it is real ugly. Uh, Do we have time for some miscellaneous notes? You know it. Okay, let's have a look here. Uh, There's a moment where... um, All the engineers of uh, of Wayne Enterprises couldn't uh, make that big bat whale plane fly. But Bruce is going to do it. And he says, I need more range and I need more cargo. And I'm like, do you? I mean, realistically, you need, like... Room for, like, six guys in a Batmobile. I think a regular plane yeah. could fit six guys in a Batmobile. There's too much weight. I can't. We can't take off. Well, I could just get out and fly because I can fly. <laughs> oh, I can also fly. Oh, I can fly as well, I think. Maybe. I'm Wonder Woman. Can I fly? <laughs> I don't know. I could just get out and I could run across the ocean in a second. <laughs> I guess I'll just fly this myself then. Yeah, maybe you should. <laughs> Just get a regular plane, idiot. Also, maybe it doesn't fly because obviously it wouldn't. Just look at it. <laughs> it's a fucking brick. Right. You've built a giant brick. You've built a big paperweight. <laughs> what were you thinking? Uh, here's a note. Isn't it fascinating that J.K. Simmons has flawlessly embodied not one but two iconic comic book characters? you got J. Joe and Jameson nailed it. Perfect casting. Yep. I think he's perfect for Commissioner Gordon as well. I don't like the hair. It's too floppy. Brush it back. <laughs> you think so? Yeah, you look like a hippie. Wow, no, he does kind of, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. But no, he's terrific. I like there's a moment where all the good guys have to get over a, a broken wall walkway and they all have a little signature jump. They do, don't Is that they? bit? One of them has a big jump yeah. and one uses his little grappling hook and one is like, I'll super speed over. That feels like a Lego puzzle. It does, not In a Lego yeah. video game. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> anyway, generally speaking, I had a pretty good time. Yeah, me too. But it's not over yet, Mason, because it's time for Trivia Snyder, Justice Trivia. I love that. The trivia segment of the show. While it's not mentioned in this movie, Zack Snyder and Chris Terrio switched the familiar roles of Steppenwolf and Darkseid. So normally Steppenwolf is Darkseid's uncle, but in this I think he's supposed to be his nephew. Okay. So it's a real Reverse LMFAO situation. Yeah, exactly. Okay, great. Sure, yeah, sure, yeah. Sure. John Stewart was going to be played by Wayne T. Carr, but Warner Brothers forced Snyder to remove him because they had plans for this character later. So that moment where Martian Manhunter shows up, that was going to be just anybody. When you say John Stewart, you mean the political comedian John Stewart. That's right, yeah. Okay, right. And he's like, there's too many capitalism in this movie. Mm, and yeah. there is. Yeah, that's true. Remember the bit with the money? Oh my God, he made that money so the big. The bull was fighting the bear. He covers for it because he's, you know, he's helping that woman who doesn't have a lot of money and, and so forth. The, the bank ATM is like, you've won a big prize or whatever. Don't do that. You 
go into the bank and be like, I want hey. this big prize. And they'll be like, no, you didn't. Give us the money back. <laughs> this was an error. Give us the money back. And, and you're going to yeah. jail. <laughs> uh, apparently, Snyder originally wanted Ryan Reynolds to return as a Green Lantern in that okay. scene. Because, of course, he was Hal Jordan in Green Lantern 2011, a movie we've also looked at. Mm. But he didn't end up contacting him. So, I don't... That's what he said. Okay. And the thing about Ryan Reynolds is, you can't contact him anyway. He's nowhere on social media. That's so true, He's a real Daniel Day-Lewis, isn't he? <laughs> isn't he? Yeah, that's, he what? just does a project and he disappears. You know what I mean? <laughs> and Zack Snyder also stated that his ideal casting for Selena Kyle slash Catwoman is Carla Gugino. Oh, she's from Watchmen. Yeah. And other things. She would be a terrific Catwoman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but she's not. This is over. Yeah. Or is it? We'll it talk is. about it. It is. Mason. Okay. Now, the box office for this. Go on. It had, like, a very limited cinematic release. Uh, so, no, it didn't really make any it money. on the telly. Yeah, exactly. On a budget of $70 million, that's just for this version. That's in addition to the $300 million they already spent on this movie mm. and the previous movie. I don't think it performed well enough on HBO Max because that was the idea. It was COVID. They were looking for things to put on their service. Mm -hmm. They said, what do we have? We have three and a half hours of Justice League footage, maybe. But I feel like if it got the subscribers they were looking for and the watch time and all of that, Uh then this would be the universe we would still be... I mean, potentially, but I also kind of feel like there is no amount of watch time that would have been enough. You know what I mean? It's impossible to know. I think there would be subscribers. I think there would be an amount of subscribers. Oh, Matt, that's probably true. But I mean, it it wouldn't have reached red notice numbers. No, how could it? So, you know, there's been talk of a sequel. There's been a fan campaign to get that happening like there was to get this happening. Mm -hmm. So that worked. So, you know, thought, why not roll that over into a new movie and explore the nightmare future and all of that that Mm -hmm. they... We're clearly setting up, but at this point, Zack Snyder's moved on. He's obviously doing Rebel Moon for Netflix, and he did Army of the Dead, and then he's up to various other projects. I wouldn't say never say never yeah. in terms of this. But I would say let the man live. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, yeah, he said also that he's kind of bored with this genre at this point. You know, he said kind of everything that he wanted to say. He dedicated this movie to his daughter who he lost, which was one of the reasons why he came off the project. It wasn't the only reason mm. Warner Brothers weren't happy with him either. But yeah, if Clooney can come back, there's a very good chance in the future, and it could be 20 years, mm-hmm. that this is all revisited in That's some true. way or another. Mm-hmm. They could bring Henry Cavill in and he'd be like, I didn't remember fighting a giant spider. For this, <laughs> I just sat in a waiting room for 10 minutes and then they said I could go. <laughs> now I'm fighting a spider on screen. <laughs> but I think also the important thing to remember is if you want a sequel to this... Make it yourself. Well, yes, make it yourself. <laughs> But also, there are sequels. There's Aquaman, which is set after this, Shazam, The Suicide Squad, Peacemaker, Black Adam, Shazam 2, The Flash, Blue Beetle, and Aquaman 2. All of these movies canonically come after this movie, and they all might be in the same continuity, probably, maybe. Probably, Who's maybe. to say? Yeah, I don't it's know. It's not up to me to say. No. Yeah. I'll say it. They are. <laughs> Terrific. You're welcome, everyone. My goodness. Mm. What a year for Caravan of Garbage it's been. I agree. We looked at some movies. Yep. Thought we, about them? We, we thought about them, we talked about them. Yeah, that's right. Ben and Lawrence made videos for them. That's right. Yeah, we sent them the audio and said, do this, fix this. <laughs> fix all this. <laughs> so everyone say thank you to them for fixing it for a year. They did an amazing Another job. Year. Yeah, my goodness. And of course, if you do have any suggestions for Caravan of Garbage for next year, we'll be back in early February. Please leave them below. But we're not going away yet. There's a couple more videos to come before the end of the year on this channel. Ooh. Before we take a break in January, the reason being is because YouTube ad revenue in January really sucks, and I'm not putting out anything new because it will make it'll make less money. And I don't, I'm not about making less money; I'm about, oh, yeah. I'm about making more money. But there will be compilation videos. Oh, terrific! Just some old crap taped together. Oh my God! Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, you'll be able to see those seams. But we are continuing things at BigSandwich.co, which is like our private Patreon, where we do movie commentaries. We've done a commentary for this movie. Oh my God! We really did. Did we break it into two? I think we might have. Yes, but then I think Collings, who edits all those, put them together also in one big. Oh, if you are interested. Good for him. Yeah. We do video game Let's Plays. We looked at the Aquaman 2003 video game. It's so bad. It's so bad. And it's in the same universe as this. Yes. <laughs> so it's required watching. <laughs> We're looking at a really cool Justice League comic as well by Grant Morrison. Oh, I love that Grant Morrison. Also our podcast at Weekly Planet where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. That comes out there early on Sunday as opposed to Monday where, of course, we're wrapping up the year with our best and worst, etc. We, 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 give, we give out all sorts of awards. We do. They mean nothing. <laughs> they mean nothing, but we do it anyway. We do it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's got us on YouTube channel, Spotify, all of that. But also, thank you so much to everybody who continues to watch these, or if you're new, or if you're, if you're leaving... 
Don't let the door hit you on the way out. Yeah, man. In the ass. <laughs> Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord Splitcher. You know what I mean? That's right. Uh, but no, we genuinely do appreciate it because what what an opportunity to have this as a job. That's so true. It's lunacy, but it I appreciate is. it so much. Don't make me no teach way. again. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> In a way, we're teaching every week here. That's true. You know, about movies. <laughs> yeah. All that knowledge about movies we have. And Jesus. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot to do that. <laughs> we'll rebrand next year. Yeah, we'll that's rebrand right. next yeah, year. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right, thanks, everyone. Grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you real soon. Goodbye.